that only he and only he deserves. Hallelujah, Lord God, we love you. We know that we are in your presence, God. So as I minister this morning, I pray that the Holy Spirit will not only be present in your lives, but it will douse your entire being with his goodness. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We are standing on hope.
this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's just remain standing. Father God, we give you glory and we give you our best this morning, oh God, because you have given us your best, your son. And Father, we are so appreciative, so thankful today, oh Lord, for what you have done for us. Now, Lord, we pray that you move by your spirit as you continue to lift us up this morning. Bind the hands of the devil this morning. Bind the manifestations of the flesh this morning. Move against it, oh God. Everything that comes to hinder, divide, destroy, everything that comes to impede our, our progress, move against it in the name of Jesus. Everything that causes us to back away from your promises, oh Lord, move against it in the name of Jesus. All sin, all lies, all rumors, anything that comes to divide us, move against it, oh Father. In the name of Jesus, we come this morning, oh God, to lift you up and to bless your name, oh God. We are here in the sanctuary, oh God, to rejoice because you have done so much for us, oh God. And we are thankful today, oh Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you this morning. We thank you for last night, oh God. And rise this morning and raise us up this morning. We thank you, oh God. We praise you, oh God, that the worst thing did not happen to us. We give you praise, oh God. We're not locked up, oh God. We're not sick. We thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you this morning. We bless you this morning. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. To you minister to those that have lost family members and, and loved ones, oh God. We pray that you would touch their lives, oh God. Touch Reverend Gardner now, Lord. Sister Ernestine Gardner's family, her sister Miriam, touch this morning, bless this morning, minister this morning, oh God, in the name of Jesus for our sister Debbie Hawkins. Touch this morning, bless this morning, in the name of Jesus. And for my family, bless Bless my son. Lift him, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Move this morning by your spirit, oh God. We believe you for miracles this morning. For those that have heart problems, oh God. For our brother Nate, oh God. We lift him up this morning, oh God. For those that have heart problems, Sister Evelyn, oh God. We lift her up this morning, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For Sister Joan this morning, we lift her up, oh God. To Dr. Jefferson, we lift him up this morning, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh Father, we praise you and we bless you this morning, oh God. 
for those that are at home that are sick this morning. Yeah. We lift up the tailors this morning. Yeah. We lift yeah. them up, oh God, in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, oh God. Move in the midst of us, oh Lord. Let your angels come this morning to help me minister, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We praise you and we bless you, oh God. We magnify your holy name, oh God. Praise you this morning, oh God. For those that are recovering, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the recovery. Now, Lord, the recovering of their bodies, their health this morning. For grace, we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you for those that are trapped in depressed state of mind. Loose now, Lord. Let your light shine this morning upon all of those that are heavy now, Lord, in depressed states of mind, oh God. Lift them up, oh God, and bring them forth. Is my prayer this morning in the name of Jesus. Calls the, the spirit of rejoicing now, Lord, to inhabit those hearts and minds in the name of Jesus. Settle right here. Hallelujah. Move by your spirit. And we promise, oh Lord, to give you all of the glory and all of the praise. We take none of it upon ourselves. For you deserve the glory this morning. And you deserve the praise. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord again in a hand clap of praise. Amen. Good morning. You can have your seats. Abiding faith. God is good. And all the time, he's even what? He's even better. How do we know it, church? Because I'm blessed. I'm ready. I'm fresh. I'm dreaming. I'm not deceived. I'm open to change. And I'm rooted and grounded in the word of God. Amen. Remember how we used to say that? Hallelujah. How do you know it? I'm blessed. I'm ready. I'm fresh. I'm dreaming. I'm not deceived. I'm open to change and whatever God wants to do in my life. And how many know it's important that we are rooted and grounded in the word of God? Hallelujah. To know God and to know him, his word for ourselves. And that's my testimony. I want to know him for myself and to be rooted and grounded in his word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning I'm going to talk to you about spiritual focus, but today I want to exhort you a little bit. Let's talk about forgiveness and its importance in our exhortation. In Matthew 5, 23 through the 24th verse, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be using this. My voice is kind of loud or quite loud. Amen. That's that excitement. Amen. Praise God. I praise God and bless God for it. Amen. And God saved me and came into my life and welcome to those that are watching virtually about 47 years ago, almost 46, 47 years ago. And I really thank God for for saving me. And, and, and um, my testimony has always been I never had a desire to go back to the world. Never entered my mind. Never crossed my mind to go back. Go to, to go back to my old ways. Never did. Never did. And I really thank God for that. If, if there's anything I can thank him for, I can thank him that I never had a desire to go back to sin. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And to my old ways. I give God so much. I uh, give him the glory. Matthew 5, 23. It says, uh, 23, 24. Uh, it says, therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar. And there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your offering, therefore, there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother. And then come and present your offering. Can I say that again? If you are presenting your offering at the altar. And you remember that your brother has something against you. Mm -hmm. Leave your offering. Mm -hmm. 
there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offering. The Bible says make friends quickly with your opponent and law while you are with him on the way so that your opponent may not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Matthew 6.14 says, For if you forgive others for their transgression, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Plain and simple. Matthew 6.14-15. Jesus calls for reconciliation to be sought for Eagerly. He calls for reconciliation to be sought for eagerly, aggressively, and quickly. Not when you feel like it. Not when you decide to do it. But eagerly, aggressively, and quickly. No man knows the day or the hour when he's going to come. Amen. Not when you feel like it. Not when you decide to do it. Move quickly and always keep the work of Jesus Christ before you. The ministry, the continuation of the work of Jesus Christ. That's what ministry is. Always keep it before you. And when we do not follow the work or the word, when we get blinded by not forgiving, the work of God is not before us. And we do not, amen, we do not follow the calling or, or the direction that God is, is, is taking us. So we have to remind, remind ourselves that the work always must stay before us. The vision and the heart and the heart to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That always has to be before you. That's why he said do it eagerly. Do it quickly. Do it aggressively. Amen? Because he, wants, he doesn't want us to forgive. I mean to forget. That, that love that God has put in our heart, it should manifest, amen? And that we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. The longer you wait, church, the harder it is to get it out. Amen. The longer you wait. And sin, the sin of separation becomes greater because you have prolonged what the Bible says, do it aggressively, do it quickly, eagerly about it. And you find that the longer you wait, the harder it gets to go and tell that brother or to confess your faults. You don't put time on it, amen? Time works against you. That is not working in your favor in that particular situation when it comes to that. Fall failure to forgive damages your reputation as a believer as a soldier of the cross, damages your reputation with God. Amen? How can we say that we love God who we have never seen? Amen? And we hate that brother or that sister. It damages your reputation. You know, it's almost like you walk outside of fellowship when you don't forgive. I mean, with him, with God. It's almost like you're not in fellowship with God. Anytime you harbor or hold on to anything that uh, is negative or the hate or grudges against someone, you are now walking out of fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And remember the purpose, the sole purpose of Jesus Christ. He died for us so that he would what uh, that, that sacrifice and we will be back in fellowship. Amen. After being out of fellowship. Uh, when Adam and Eve, when they fell out of fellowship or communion with God, Jesus came and he put us back in fellowship, his sacrifice. Amen. Amen. And we don't want to be out of fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think I can afford it. Amen. I don't know about you. Praise God. Praise God. Failing to forgive damages your reputation as a believer and as a soldier of the cross. In Matthew 16, 24, he said to his disciples, 16, 24, 25, Matthew 16, 24, 25. Then Jesus said to his, his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. 
See, when, when I don't forgive, I haven't denied myself. Let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. It's hard for me to not forgive and, and say, I'm going to take up the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. No. Those two do not go together. You know, you can't hate somebody and say, I'm going to take up my cross. No. If, he, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, you will find it. We dishonor God when we fail to forgive one another. It's like saying, I don't care about you. Dishonor. You take the honor away from him. When we fail to forgive one another. When you can't forgive, that's bondage. I heard Minister O'Caffer start talking about bondage this morning. When you can't forgive, that's bondage. That's bondage, church. And when we become ineffective to God, when we are in bondage, we are ineffective. You can't pray a prayer. All right. Amen. When you're in, I mean, it, it's almost like your prayers go to the top of the ceiling and they bounce right back on. They don't go anywhere. When you are in bondage, when you are in bondage, you are ineffective. To the Lord Jesus Christ. So God, you, you're, you're no good. What happened with Israel? When Israel was in, in bondage and following idols, they were ineffective. The children of Israel. Well, you told them, I, you should have no other gods before me. They were ineffective. How many times have we put other things before God? Well, we are not effective when we do that. I gotta think about this life that God has called us and, and the, the structure that He has given us to walk in that pathway. Amen? Amen? To walk in that pathway. So think about that. We dishonor God and you can't uh, forgive. When you can't forgive, that's bondage. Now, what He did in Hebrews 12 and 7, God disciplines us. How many like being chastised by God? It is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as with sons. So for all of those that say that, I don't want God to tell me, all right, well, maybe you're not one of those sons or daughters, amen? amen. For God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom the, his father does not discipline? What son is there whom God, who the father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. I don't want to be corrected by God. And maybe you are not a son. Because he chastises those that he what? He loves. Amen. Discipline is intended to bring us back into fellowship with him. Back into fellowship. So he has to correct our ways. Amen. And let us know that this son, daughter, this is not in it, it, discipline. It doesn't, it's not intended to make you, you, you know, it hurt your feelings. But he knows how important your life is. And all of us need to realize that we are a threat to the enemy. That's why we want to stay on the straight and narrow. Amen. Amen. You praying, you fasting, you, you're giving yourself to the Lord. You are a threat to the enemy. You're living a life of righteously, holiness, all the other things, upright. You are a threat to the enemy. You are out there working in the kingdom, building souls or winning souls. You become a threat to the enemy. Don't lose the vision, church. Right. Don't lose the vision. Amen. Amen. So discipline puts us back in the fellowship with him. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, it says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So what we're saying this morning, they have to be spiritually discerned. The natural man doesn't understand everything that's coming out of my mouth is foolishness. Why I have to forgive? Why I need to go back and say I'm sorry? 
Because the things of the spirit, you, you understand what he's saying? They are spiritually deserved. Proverbs 3, 11 through 18 says, My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord, although his reproof for whom the Lord loves, he reproves, even as a father corrects his son in whom he delights. How blessed is a man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. So there's wisdom in, 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 in understanding what God is saying and you gain an understanding. Remember last week I said we talked about the revelation. Uh, there's a, when that revelation of, of what God is saying, you, I got it. You know, you get the revelation in, in under, uh, of understanding what God is saying. The impact uh, on you at now it has brought a, a better understanding of what God wants. The revelation of what God is saying this morning. Uh -huh. That if I'm going to be a child of, of the king, then I cannot go around and not forgive or, or hold something against you and, and not let it go. I, you know, I, I got this revelation. I know that it, it, it will impede my, my progress. And I don't want anything to impede my progress. Praise God. So you find wisdom, you gain understanding for her profit is better than the profit of silver and her gain better than gold. She is more precious than jewels. Talking about wisdom and nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are always pleasant are, are, are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Happy are all who fear, who hold her fast. That's wisdom. That's the wisdom of following the discipline of what God is saying to us. Riches and honor. Amen. All the wonderful things that God brings about. Her ways are pleasant ways. And her paths are peace. How many want your peace? You don't like your peace to be disturbed. That's why, we, that's why we can't entertain drama. Amen. The drama king and the drama queen. Yeah, what, your peace. You don't want it disturbed. Amen. When you have gone through trauma and turmoil um, or any kind of disruption, when you settle into peace, amen, when you settle and say, I don't want to deal with any nonsense anymore, when you settle into peace, you love it, you want to stay there, you want to raise it, because you are now at a place where God wants you to be too. Amen. At peace, at peace, amen? amen, at peace. All of this came amen. while I was working on forgiveness. While I was working on forgiveness, the importance of forgiveness. We, uh, and we grow this morning because of a spiritual focus. I want to talk about the spiritual focus. Spiritual focus. That's how we're going to grow. We talked about spiritual checkup a few uh, weeks ago. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about spiritual focus. How many have your spiritual focus? Amen. 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 I don't know if I welcome all of those that are, well, are watching virtually. Well, welcome to you this morning. Bless you. Where are we without a spiritual focus? How many of you get up in, in the morning and you just get dressed and run to the car or, you know, whatever you do, you catch the bus, whatever, and, and you never stop to pray? You just get up and go grab, grab something to eat on the way out and you're running, but you never stop to pray. Never stop to give God thanks. Where are we without a spiritual focus? Spiritual focus calls for commitment. Mm -hmm. yes. Spiritual focus calls for commitment. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't want anything to disturb your peace. Amen. Amen. You know, you don't want to follow rumors or nonsense and drama. You, you, you just can't afford it. The commitment is essential, church. I want to take you to the book of Acts, second chapter. It's after or during that time of, of, of Pentecost when the Spirit fell upon the apostles. 
But when Peter starts to talk with them, he says in Acts, this is 238, 40 through um, verses 47, New King James, it said, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord God will call. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Hear the word that Peter says, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his words were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayers. Fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods. Why? They had this spiritual focus. And they divided them among all as anyone had need. They were not selfish. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. They had this one mind, church. One mind. This is what it takes. We're talking about in the midst of a pandemic. What will it still take for us? If we're talking about the gathered body of Christ, keeping our spiritual focus, what will it, it's going to take still yet one mind. And let me say this to all of those that are watching virtually that will not come to church, come to church. Come to church. We have allowed, and let me pull the covers off the pandemic. We have allowed the pandemic now to dictate to us whether or not we will what? Come and worship God. Amen. And be in the in, in fellowship. They continued that one mind with the prayers, with the, with the fellowshipping. With the breaking of bread, house to house. We may not be able to go house to house. We could try. One mind. One mind. That is what is really hindering the further progress. The one mind. All right, and I'll say it. I've said it before. If I can go to work without a mask. If I can go to the grocery store without a mask. If I can walk my neighborhood or wherever I go in crowds without a mask, I can come to church. This word, this scripture would say, a vital church, it grows. It's needed. It's necessary. And here's a question for you. Have you made yourself vital? to the work of God by maintaining your spiritual uh, purpose, your spiritual focus. Have you made yourself vital? Personally, I believe that um, just like when I was in the world, amen, and sometimes you transfer some of those things, those, not, not, not the habits, you transfer the thought. I was in the world, I didn't think that the party was gonna start until I got there. I carry that thought into my spiritual
spirituality. And I believe that church doesn't start, can't happen till I get that. Now, that may be a little selfish, but it's not arrogant or anything like that. I'm just saying I feel like I am a vital part of the work of God. I feel like I am important to the work of God. I need it, necessary, in the work of God. I believe that. Have you made yourself vital to the work of God? Or are you one of those sideline members? No. Sitting on the sideline. Waiting for somebody to, to come and ask you to, to do. Are you a sideline member? You don't see yourself vital. You don't see yourself a prayer warrior. You don't see yourself interceding. You don't see yourself fasting on the national day that we call our national day of fasting on Monday. You don't see yourself fasting for the changes of this world. And Lord knows we are facing some incredible things this day and age. But you don't see a need to fast and turn down your plate. Come on now. Leave it to the elders. Leave it to the mirrors. They got it. Sacrifice, church. Do you see yourself as vital to the work of God by maintaining your spiritual purpose and focus? Do you see yourself vital? God needs me to make sure I get this done and I get that done. Do you see yourself? Is it possible to lose my spiritual focus? Is it possible? Can I? Can I? Yes. It's possible. That's what the pandemic has allowed and, and helps us to see. It's possible to lose your spiritual focus. A church that loses its soul winning thrust loses its reason to exist. It's okay to have fashion shows and teas and, and men's day and women's day and all the other kind of days. But what happens when I lose my, my, my soul winning thrust? And it doesn't matter if I see a soul delivered. It doesn't matter if I see a, a soul brought off the streets and, and, and brought to Jesus. What happens when it doesn't phase me? That's their problem. They're out of a job. That's their issue, not mine. What happens when I stop caring about what happens to my brothers and my sisters? And I get comfortable at ease in my nice home or, or comfortable surroundings and I see nothing wrong. Is it possible that this pandemic has really dealt the blow to the church. Truth be told, it may never be the same as it once was. You can already see it by the lackadaisical interest in coming to the house of God. Running to the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me. The Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. My lackadaisical interest, I lose my focus. We have to watch. Expose the devil. So you won't think that I'm all right. I know it's the technology and I, I know it's the wave of the future, but you've got to look at what you know some people can can do it. But you may not be able to. Amen. Amen. It's like different styles. Everybody can't wear the same style. Amen. Amen. It may not fit everybody. Amen. Losing ground, not coming to church, not being fed in a fellow, it may not be good for you. All right. All right. Because you're in bondage. You haven't realized you're in bondage. Ow, you haven't realized you are ineffective. 
You haven't, you haven't realized that there's no um, pr productivity coming from you spiritually. We have to really take the, uh, expose the enemy. <coughs> Church, this is what the devil does. The devil will insert himself right here in church. He inserts himself. That's what he did in the wilderness with, the, with Israel. He inserted themselves. And before you knew it, they were worshiping idols. Just like today, he has inserted himself. And he's no longer first. Your first love. Your first love is now taking, taking back at the back seat. And something else now becomes more important than the will of God. The will of God. How can he say that good and faithful servant, well done, when I have allowed him to be another player in my life? Amen. Not number one. Maybe that might be it. Too many players. Before we have used the pandemic most of the time as a crutch with very little or no, no intentions of depending on God. Trusting God. Be open to the voice of God. I wrote this earlier this week. Be open to the voice of God. Let me tell you what St. John 10 says. St. John 10. Verse 1 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings them out, his own sheep, brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Be open to the voice. They know his voice, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Are we open to his voice? When he calls, when he instructs, are we following strangers? Well, that's why they say sometimes you watch too much TV and, and, and too much news. You, you, you start beginning, believing, okay, this is the way it's going to go. And it begins to impress you or press upon you. And you have to push yourself away sometimes because that begins to consume you and eat at you. Be open to the voice. Be open to the voice because strangers we should not be following. How can someone outside of the church that may not be saved all of a sudden they got major influence in your life? Come on now. Come on now. Preach. They don't know the difference between 2 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. <laughs> but they got major influence. So we have to be open to the voice. We have to be open to the will of God. 
Amen. We have to be able to discern what is going on. And, 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 and this is not a Republican thing or a Democratic thing or an independent thing. We're just talking about what the will of God. The enemy has inserted himself into the culture of the church. Come on now. And people have lost their focus because he has inserted himself into the things that God said should be. That were righteous. And we can't discern it. Because we've lost the spiritual focus. And they say the old saying that we learned once years and years ago. That the undiscerning mind is just like the roots of a tree. Absorbing, absorbing even poison. That's the undiscerning mind. Just like the roots of a tree. You pour it in there, that the roots are going to suck it up. And sometimes our minds are undiscerning and we're sucking up and taking in poison. Because we can't discern the time. We can't discern what's good for us. We don't allow the Holy Spirit to direct and, and influence us in every action of our lives. Major mistake that the undiscerning mind. Now all of a sudden, everyone can tell you and direct you. Major, 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 major influence in your life. And they don't come to church. They don't pray. And you have to be very careful of that. Be careful of that. I wrote down all the things that we do as a body of Christ to ensure the, the, the strength of this ministry. I wrote it down and I said, Lord, all these things are in place to help us. All the things that we do, morning worship, Wednesday night Bible study, although it may, may be by Zoom, you've got garden hour, you've got men's meeting, you've got intercessory prayer at six, you've got children's church ministry. All of these things are in place to make sure that we don't lose our spiritual focus. Yeah. And before the pandemic, I had one young man to come to. He said, I, 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 I don't see what the church can, can, can do. Um, for me, I said, have you applied yourself to any of these things that we're doing? But he spent a lot of time playing video games all day. Oh, yeah. Come on now. Of course you're going to miss what God is saying. Come on now. Hmm. But he couldn't find himself in any of the things that God had already put in place for our, our viability so that we can have longevity, so that we can survive don't look at Bible study as always oh, another Wednesday night Bible study. We got excellent teachers. Amen. Amen. Don't look at the garden hours. Oh, it's just a bunch of ladies getting together. Ooh, Men's being just a bunch of men, you know. Yeah. Add to what you may say is lacking. Come on now. Maybe they need your voice. Amen. Maybe they need your input. Maybe you need to lead the prayer in the morning. Amen. We have 6 a.m. prayer. My prayer time starts at 5 a.m. Hmm. I start at 5 a.m. I'm not waiting till 6. I, 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 I'm there, but it starts at 5 a.m. And that's when I am interceding primarily on those things that personally for family, for my wife and children, I, I spend that time at that 5 a.m. time. Hey, praise, God. praise God. You got to do what works for you. Amen. Got to do what works for you. Don't lose your, your focus. Your spiritual focus. Run like you've got a, a, a destination to get to. Put forth the, the effort. Amen. Put forth the effort. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And um, don't let the enemy take advantage. Amen. Of this situation that we're in. Don't let the enemy take advantage of us while we're in this pandemic. That's what he's doing. He's taking advantage. That's what he's doing. He's taking advantage. He knows that they have really slowed down. 
and they really don't feel that fire anymore. So he comes to take advantage. They're not missing so and so anymore. You know how it used to be. I can't wait till I get to church so I can see Sister Peter's son. She blesses me so much. But the fire is gone. Come on, Pastor. Praise God. God. Is it possible for you to lose your focus, your spiritual focus? But we don't want to. Amen. Amen. We don't want to. We got to be adamant about what we know is good for us and fight for it. Praise God. Let's all stand for you. I mean, let's all stand for you. Vital church. A vital church as an acts, they grow. They grow. He added because they were ready, enthusiastically seeking the face of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Put your prayer request before the Lord this morning. Whisper it before the Lord. If you found yourself anywhere in, this, in the word of God this morning, then tell the Lord what you need him to do for you. If you have become ineffective concerning the will of God and we know that you are in bondage and you tell the Lord I, I want to be free from this bondage praise God praise the Lord Lord God we thank you we praise you this morning we don't want to lose our spiritual focus I pray God that you would cover the people of God your children all of us today oh Lord I pray, God, that you would now, Lord, sure up those loose ends, tighten up those loose ends, and God, keep us with that focus, that spiritual focus. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh, God, I pray that there will be forgiveness in our hearts now, Lord. We accept now, Lord, the words that you have spoken and said in Scripture, for they bring us life. And they keep us now, Lord, as a threat to the enemy when we follow the word of God. We call on you today, O oh Lord, to, to heal and to bring forth deliverance this morning. Those prayers that are up before you, God, concerning our own personal peace of mind, O oh God. We, we pray this morning, God, for the re reconciliation and the restoration that's needed in the name of Jesus inside of us individually and as well as the body of Christ. Have your way this morning, O oh God. As you move now, Lord, in the midst of us, O oh Lord, so that we will be more and, and get better in doing the things of God and become effective. Oh, God, we praise you. We bless you this morning. Crush the enemy this morning. Stomp the head of the devil this morning. And Father, if I were... If I've been naive, then God opened my eyes that I might see my ears, that I might hear and be able to spiritually discern. Yes. Hallelujah. What the will of God is. Yes. Give you glory right now, Lord. Give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. And I bless you for what you are doing and speaking to us. Be open to the voice. Be open to his voice. We give you glory and we give you praise. And a stranger we will not follow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Continue moving in our lives from this day forward. As we pray now, Lord, and you're watching virtually. If you have not received the Lord in your life, you're here in the sanctuary. Just repeat after me. Lord, I want to be effective. In the house of God. Come into my life. Save me today. Take me out of this bondage today. Free me. So I can be a servant. Of the most high God. Lord I need you in my life. And I need your salvation. Forgive me. Of all my sins. Save me. And Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I bless you and praise you and I believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you repeated that prayer and you needed the Lord to come into your life, then welcome. 
Amen to the salvation of welcome to the house of God. Amen. Praise God. See yourself as vital. Amen. Sister uh, Sherry. I almost said Sherry. Sister Sherry, see yourself as vital. In the house of God. Yes. See yourself as vital, mother. See yourself vital. Husbands and wives, see yourself as vital. The kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. Amen. God is good. If anything the devil's been trying to do, he's trying to keep us from seeing the importance of what we bring in terms of building this ministry. And, and not just this ministry, the kingdom of God. Amen. Because I believe wherever you go, you carry God with you. Amen. You carry God with you. Amen. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. <laughs> praise the Lord. We're going to give this morning. And you can uh, prepare your hearts to give here in the sanctuary as well as online if you're watching virtually. Maybe you haven't given your tithe and you haven't given an offering to the Lord. Maybe there's an offering of thanks. You just want to thank him for something good that he's done for you. Then bless the Lord in your giving this morning. You can go to our website at www.abidingfaithcc.org and hit the uh, giving button. And uh, you'll see the tithe, the offering. And if you have a couple of things that you'd like to do in, in giving, then you can also designate or write it in where you want your funds to go. Um, and I just encourage you to, to be a giver. Amen. And to be a blessing. Blessing to those that are in need. A vital church grows. We grow, church. We got to grow. We got to keep growing. Amen. 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 And just remember this. There's always going to be a challenge to the will of God. There's always going to be a challenge. Every time you get ready to do right, evil is always what? Present. But you have to keep moving and pressing and stay motivated. Amen. Stay motivated to do God's will. Bless his name. And God bless all of you that are watching virtually. I love you. May God continue to take care of you. And, and may you have a wonderful week. This, this uh, week coming up. And let it be filled with God's blessings. But just make sure you maintain your spiritual focus. Amen. Amen.